This is my queen ant, and I'm about to break into her colony. These workers and their one and only queen are trapped inside this nest, and if I don't move them out now, they are all going to die. Something is killing them, and I have no idea what it is. I will do anything in order to save this colony, because they are more than just ants to me. They are my pets. So to start, I first need to build them a new home. In the wild, these ants live in and amongst trees, so what better choice of an ant farm than a literal treehouse? It's basically a mini chunk of their natural habitat. This setup offers the ants two different ways to nest. They can choose to nest either inside or underneath of the tree. And because they absolutely thrive in the wild, this might be key to saving our colony. So with only one way to find out, it's time to break into the ant farm. Three, two, one. As I remove the glass, I realize something odd. Why aren't they panicking? Usually when I break into an ant colony, the ants spread like wildfire. They run frantically and send soldiers out to attack me. As you can see, however, our colony here is barely reacting, and it only gets worse. Because as I'm preparing to move this colony, some of the surviving workers are actively dying. I need to move faster. Using special tweezers for picking up insects, I'm able to safely pick up each and every ant. It's super important that I get every single one because if I miss even just one worker, it won't survive on its own. But good thing I collected them all. Well, almost all of them. These milky white jelly beans and gummy bears are baby ants. Eggs, larvae, and pupae. It's super important that I collect these too because this is the next generation, the replacements for once the older workers die to old age or for the ones that get left behind. And just like that, the nest is empty, except for one super important ant, the queen. She's the easiest ant to capture, and so this won't take long at all. Or so I thought. I failed to grab her not once, not twice, but three times in a row. Luckily for me, however, I got her on the fourth go. I'm placing her majesty directly into the treehouse, and this is where one of her workers actually discovered her. Maybe now they'll finally begin to move in. All I have to do is wait. The next day, there were no ants to be seen at all, not even inside the nest. A single worker on top of the tree stump is all there is, but as you can see, she is super sick and can't even react to my finger. This is not a good sign. In fact, this is exactly what happened in the very beginning. These workers here are terminally ill, and all of them are just minutes away from dying. And now you're probably wondering, what is killing my ants? Well, what makes this situation even more terrifying is I don't know what's killing my ants. And what makes it substantially worse is I don't even know if it's contagious. If so, it means all of the ants in my room might also be infected. So to play it safe, I need to evacuate and quarantine everyone. First are my honeypot ants. They will go to my living room. Next are the fire ants. These spicy girls will be going to my... On second thought, maybe that's not the smartest idea. How about the computer room? Whew, that's much safer. The harvester ants will go to my bedroom. At least these ants won't attack me in my sleep. So all that's left now is this colony. These are my big headed ants, but there's a problem. Their setup is filled with about 60 pounds of, oh, that wasn't too bad. They'll be staying in my kitchen for now. So with everyone now evacuated, it's time to, wait, where were we? Oh, right, my ants are dying. Aside from the one worker on top of the treehouse, there isn't much action going on here. But when zoomed out, that's when I noticed a group of workers on the tray below that was holding the entire ant farm. And honestly, it gave me a pretty good idea. The plant pot has a lifted base, so by looking under it, I can see some workers, and I'm pretty sure this right here is a brood pile. The only thing that troubles me now is that I don't see the queen. If she's lost, or even worse, dead, the entire colony is doomed. She's pretty big, so she should be easy to find, which is why I'm 100% sure that this huge shadow belongs to the queen. So with the entire colony underneath of this plant pot, I need to make a move, because with no access to food or water, this is no place for an ant colony. During this next part, I must be extremely careful to make sure that the ants don't go everywhere. So I uprooted the plant pot, and as the queen made a run for it trying to save herself, I added a new nest. 
I guided the queen inside the entrance, and with the help of a stick, the workers are able to make their way inside the nest as well. And because ants love the dark, I also made sure that the nest stayed completely covered, and I cut off all of my filming lights. So once everyone had moved in an hour later, I finally got to shut the door. Inside the nest, it looks super cozy, and it's no wonder the ants moved in so quickly. To be honest, if I were an ant, I'd definitely live here. I've got access to a giant water tower, seven different bedrooms, and even a front yard for hunting and throwing away my trash. Oh, and if I ever get tired, I could always go back home and cuddle up right next to my giant queen ant mother. Sounds like a win to me. Speaking of which, the queen and her workers seem to love it here, and they're already beginning to look more lively. In fact, just a few weeks later, I noticed they started to hatch out a few new workers. This means they are thriving, or so I thought. It really hurts to say this, but after the ants had settled inside their new home, they did in fact begin to recover, and for a while, I thought they would make a full recovery. Unfortunately, however, I was wrong. One day, I noticed that the queen's head wasn't as perked up as it used to be. She almost seemed exhausted, and that's because she was. The queen had used her last remaining bit of energy to keep herself alive, but whatever had killed her workers had already infected her. And sure enough, her and the last surviving workers all died one by one. But why? How the heck did this happen? And what about my other ant colonies? I can't let this happen again. I need to know what killed them. If anything killed my ants, it had to have come from the old nest. The only possible culprits must be the nest itself, their food, or their water. My first thought was maybe there was a fungal or bacterial outbreak. Swabbing the nest is the only way to tell, but I must be careful. There's tons of mold and likely millions of bacteria inside this nest. So to be safe, I must wear a mask. I'm swabbing the nest in three different spots. This should give us the most accurate results. So after swabbing the petri dishes as well, I set them aside to incubate for a week. This allows for the mold and bacteria to grow throughout the dish. But while we wait for that, it's time to test their water. This water test kit will tell me if my water is safe to drink. And if it's safe for me, it's also safe for my ants. After testing my water, however, pretty much all metrics came back as clean drinking water. Both iron, copper, and the six other tests were within the healthy range. But what about the petri dishes? It's been three days so far, and something is definitely growing, but I need to give it more time. For now, we'll move on to their food. The outworld is littered with dead insect parts. Both cricket legs and mealworm exoskeletons are present, but most interestingly, a dead moth. The crickets and mealworms are store-bought, so it couldn't have been them. The only other insect is this moth, and after taking a closer look, the ants never finished eating it. And now I have a bad feeling of what this could possibly mean. So performing a quick Google search should tell me what's going on, right? Are moths poisonous? Okay, they aren't. But wait, what about other poisons? Ones that are specifically made to kill ants? What about pesticides? What the heck even are these? It says here that boric acid attracts ants and spreads through colonies after ingestion. Hydromethanol poisons the ants as they carry it back to the nest. Fipronil attacks the nervous system of ants and piperinil butoxide slows ant metabolism. Wait, oh no. I remember earlier the ants looked like they were having an ant seizure. This has to be fipronil. And the reason for the ants not finishing the moth means piperinil butoxide was also present. But I never used pesticides, so at first I was very confused. Then I remembered where I got the moth. Normally, I blacklight looking for new queen ants. But alongside new queens, I also find other bugs which I feed to my ant colonies. And so I thought a moth would make for the perfect meal for this ant colony. Little did I know, this moth must have been infected and proceeded to land on my blacklight. But is that really it? Is this moth the one thing that killed my entire ant colony? Well, before I jump to a conclusion, we can't forget about the petri dishes. It's now been one week of letting these dishes incubate, and we finally have the results. But this doesn't look good. In fact, I don't even know what I'm looking at. But according to Google AI, these seem to be mold growths, possibly black mold or mildew. Mold itself isn't an ant killer. It can be in large quantities, but since the ants have a strong immune system, they can cohabitate with small amounts of mold with little to no issue. So it couldn't have been this. Which means our colony killer was undoubtedly the pesticides. But thankfully, it's not all bad news. 
because this means that so long as I don't feed my ants bugs from outside, all the rest of the ants are completely safe. So with the mystery finally solved, my ants can finally rest knowing that my other ant colonies will continue on their legacy.